All right. Welcome to episode 44 of the Jake Blanchard podcast brought to you in part by our friends at Fellowship Brand Premium Men's Grooming Products. Check them out at fellowshipbrand.com. Use the code JBP at checkout. Get yourself some free shipping on your first order of the best beard oils, balms, and waxes out there. Go check them out, fellowshipbrand.com. My guest today is Adam Hires. I am so excited to chat with this man. He's got an interesting story and I'm looking forward to diving into the details from a powerlifting career uh, to becoming one of the top uh, mortgage loan officers in the industry. He also develops courses to help other mortgage loan officers find balance in their work and life and attack their business. Uh, he's all about discipline, improving relationships and helping people increase their income while decreasing their hours and living their best life. Adam, welcome to the podcast, my man. I love it. I love it. Great, uh, great intro. Uh, loving the beard oil there. I need to <laughs> Dude, go check them out myself, man. They're, they're a, uh, an up and comer, but man, they have really made a, uh, a dent on the market. I've, uh, their, nice. their reviews have just been killer. So yeah, fellowship is a, a cool partner to, uh, to be supporting the podcast. Love it. Hey, let's find out a little bit about you hit the top of the waves here. Where are you from? What's your background, man? <laughs> Loaded question all the way around there. So, um, where I'm from. So right now I live in a little place called Claremont, Georgia. It's about an hour north of Atlanta. I moved here about five months, four or five months ago from Kentucky, where I lived for about 20 years. Um, originally grew up in Upper Michigan till I was 14, then moved to Texas in high school and three different uh, high schools in Texas. So I went from very uh, cold to two a day football uh, in August in Texas and about died. And so just uh, they, they don't mess around. Kinda, no, they don't mess no. around with Texas football, man. No, no, it was, it was great. I, I loved it. Um, yeah. Uh, other than moving the, the, the worst part was moving three, three different high schools in, in, in Texas. And uh, that was, that was very difficult. So, but, uh, but no, yeah, a little loaded question. I uh, ever, you know, been a little bit everywhere and, uh, finally, uh, finally moved again after 20 years in, uh, in Kentucky and just said, Hey, you know, let's, let's try something new. Yeah. So, you know, I'm doing some research about you. I, uh, came across you definitely an accomplished, uh, power lifter. Uh, it, you it seems like you did it for a, a number of years, I was throwing up a lot of weight, uh, within your weight class. Mm -hmm. tell, tell me how you got into power lifting. What was that journey? Like, was that something that you always liked doing? You found it after high school, like Take me yeah. through that. So when I was, I remember when I was a freshman year in high school, uh, you know, the first time I ever squatted, I squatted 385 pounds. I never knew anything about squatting and everybody's like, holy crap. Like that's a lot of weight. And I didn't know that was good. And then moving through high school, you know, cause well, there was actually a powerlifting champion there in one state. And he was, his name was Baron Henderson. I remember him and he, uh, but everybody was like, man, you're going to break every one of his records, right? You're just strong. Uh, but then I moved everywhere. So I kind of didn't really lift much, you know, but I never got the off season programs or anything else because I just moved so many times. Um, and then, you know, when I was in my early twenties, I got into boxing. So I was, I was boxing and I was just like, I do anything. I'm kind of all in and, um, I, you know, enjoyed it was just, trained my butt off. I was working a, at a factory 12 hour days and would get off and, and, and just run and hit the heavy bag and just do everything required. Um, and I just had a hard time finding fights. Um, you know, I'd show up and all of a sudden the opponent wasn't there and just got frustrated with it a little bit. So I was doing that for a couple of years, you know, and, you know, got pretty decent. At it. I could still throw some good hands. Uh, still hit the, hit the heavy bag and, all that stuff. So, but I was, I took about two weeks. I said, I'm going to just take two weeks off. I'm going to take two weeks off and just, you know, clear my head and what I want to do and all that. Well, I really don't take much time off. That's just kind of who I am. I got to, you know, it's, what else am I going to do? And I come across um, this power to the people by Pavel Tassolini um, and Russian. And, and uh, it was talking about the, the, the squat, excuse me, the, the deadlift and bench program sets of five. And not, so I just said, okay, I'm going to go to the local sporting goods store and grab me 390 pounds. 
And so I grabbed 390 pounds and it called for five reps on the deadlift and, and I get home and I'm boom, boom, boom. I'm, I'm putting it up, I warm up and I do 390 for five real easy, you know? And I'm like, okay, what next? So I go to the gym a few days later and I max out and do 580 pounds on a, on the deadlift. So then I start looking, okay, well, is that good? At the time I was, I was lower 200 and probably 10 pounds, something like that. So I was built uh, just by push-ups and all the stuff I did for boxing and everything else. And I was like, Oh, that's pretty decent. And then it just kind of the bug took me and I was like, okay, I, I just want to get as strong as I can. And uh, just uh, catapulted from there. So then you, uh, you started competing and, and the way that those, those uh, competitions work, it's three lifts, right? It's, it's, Correct. it's bench squat and deadlift. What yep. was your favorite one? Like, <laughs> and why? <laughs> Uh, back and forth between squat and deadlift uh, bench was never my favorite. Um, I was, you know, when I first got into powerlifting bench was actually right at my best because um, I remember I was like 230 pounds and I bench press 535 with the, I'm talking about not a bounce off your chest. I'm talking about pause and a, and a press. And then I, but then I suffered a, um, I got a car wreck, really bad car wreck. And it just messed my left shoulder up really bad um it, it, it tore my bicep tricep tie-in like right back here and it, it just i always kind of went up and down with my my bench i was somewhere you know hovering around 500 pounds but i never could to just get past her because i was always you know forever hurting it really took us you know i couldn't squat i couldn't get my hand behind a you know straight bar for almost two years after that mm. but I always, even if I would have been able to keep on going up on my bench and never got an injury, I just never got that uh, same kind of passion off there. So there's something about animal, animalistic about crawling up under a huge weight and, and not knowing if it's going to bury you or, or a deadlift, just, just grabbing it off the floor. It's, it's the most basic thing. And plus, you know, I tell you what, you could be strong in a bench and, and, and not be able to grab somebody and throw them. But I tell you what, if you're squat, uh, strong in a squat and, and deadlift, uh, there's no doubt about it. You are a physical, real man strength. <laughs> yeah, so, that's what's up. So man. I loved it. I that's, loved it. That's intense. And so you've always had this competition mindset, it sounds like, yep. as well. Like in boxing, you got into it and then you wanted to compete. And then you lifting, you're like, all right, now I have to kind of measure this, uh, yep. see where, uh, where I am in the pack, uh, at least, yep. you know, geographically. Um, but then, you know, you just talked about being injured. One of the things that I'm fascinated with is um, just kind of the tie over between sports and business, yeah. right? I mean, when we mm -hmm. talk about setbacks or changes in roster or changes in coaching, you know, there's always a really great team analogy of uh, you watch these franchises, mm -hmm. maybe in football or basketball, they have their valleys and then all of a sudden they show up in the championship. Right. Uh, you still maybe have the same appreciation or maybe a perspective around that? Um, make sure I'm understanding your question correctly. Do I have the same, uh, as far as, um, do I have the same perspective as far as business and, you know, when you look them at correlating, yeah, for sure. sports okay. and make, business, make sure I was answering your question correctly. Yes. There's, there's a correlation. Um, you know, and, and you said it competition, I mean, competition with yourself. Uh, you know, obviously I looked at what people were doing and powerlifting and, you know, and, and, you know, when you get in the business world, same thing, but it's, it's really, um, it's com competing against your, your former self, right. Yeah. Which is something that I struggle with now sometimes in, in lifting and just getting motivated and lifting. Cause I know I, I really, at this point, you know, I don't have the, um, really the desire to, or, um, or probably can, you know, go beyond the feats that I've already done. So that's, that's always difficult, right. To, to get that mindset, but, you know, you're always competing against yourself of getting better. And so I, when I was powerlifting all the time, trying to get better, trying to get better vision, all these things were going through my head. And when I was working, you know, I was not a bum. I was working, but nothing was channeled towards being the best at what I was doing at the time. It was just channeled towards powerlifting. Mm. But as soon as I said, okay, now I'm going to do something else. And I'm going to be in the business world and, and, and do this. Then and it just, it just took off from there because it's the same kind of type of discipline. It's, you know, it, it's, it's doing research. It's 
it's casting the vision, it's having the belief, it's doing the work, it's showing up correctly, it's trusting in yourself. It's all those things that just same thing applying. And so when I took it, you know, and said, okay, this is what I'm going to do now. It just started going up from there. And, um, you know, that tra trajectory went rather quickly. Oh, for sure. And so you, uh, you pivoted into the, the mortgage loan officer mm -hmm. space about five or six years ago. What were you doing prior to that? Yeah. So the, the first thing when I was, um, uh, when I started pivoting, uh, the first, well, the first thing I did is I op opened up Hulk training systems, which was like my first entrepreneurship, which That's I was uh, training. Um, and that was your you nickname know. in lifting, right? The, yeah. The Hulk. Hulk, right? Yeah. Hulk kind of, kind of got, you know, when I got, um, you know, it was, it was, it was basically because, you know, my, my, my warm up lift, you'd be like, oh, I mean, can you lift that much more? And then all of a sudden I would just kind of flip a switch and get a little bit more intense and all of a sudden I'd hit, hit three more, <laughs> three more lifts that were, you know, heavier. So, but yeah, whole training systems, I opened it up for, to, to try to help others, you know, um, get stronger and, um, you know, some were in power looking, some weren't, and I did really well there. And then from that point I said, okay, well, I, I kind of almost wanted to disassociate with anything like the, the physicality just because I just wanted a different type of challenge. So, you know, I was, I was at a, uh, I was at a uh, Aaron sales and lease at the time, you know, and I said, okay, I'm just going to, I'm going to run, I'm going to be a general manager. So rather quickly, boom, I run a store. Then, you know, I'm looking for the next thing. Cause I, you know, I don't know if that's where I want to stay at. Right. End up running an Ashley furniture, um, you know, helping sales professionals, there, you know, that's my main thing was coaching, coaching through sales and the, um, you know, the acumen also, you know, looking at the KPIs, what the behaviors were, all that stuff, which really fascinated me with the human behavior and really human. I'm most fascinated with the human potential and just potential and growth in general. That's why I'm so fascinated with when I was in powerlifting or, you know, now in sales or anything, because that's in, in in entrepreneurship because it's that growth it fascinates me and so I, from there I was, I was running Ashley Furniture and then I was like you know what I want to do something else that's you know I can have more um, control right more control of, of what's going on how I'm going to run my day etc so then five years ago almost exactly I said I'm going to be a mortgage loan officer so I got in there and I remember being a little bit like, am I as good as what I think I am? Yeah. <laughs> you know, cause this is all commission. Let's just, let's just get after it. And then uh, three months in, I started closing a lot of deals and in, in six months I was, you know, in front of a couple hundred loan officers. Uh, they, they told me to get up and, and talk about how I was closing 20 loans in a month in, in, you know, six months in and everybody's like, what the heck? How, how's that even possible? Um, you know, and it was, it was, you know, a lot of the, you know, the work I'd done previous to the, the, the mortgage industry, right. It was, it was all the, the, the mindset, it was all that. And it was all the sales acumen that I was, I was bringing in. And it was what I, as soon as immediately I said, this is what I was going to do. What I started building my, my sales and dialogue and acumen on, I was able to, to transform pretty, pretty rapidly. So then you, it was a uh, kind of a confluence of this you know, personal discipline as well as this skill set that you built. Yep. What were some of the biggest challenges though, like pivoting into this, this nebulous new space? It sounds like you kind of spent a quarter ra ramping up and then all of a sudden it took off for you, but, but what was going through your head and any major setbacks yeah. along the way? So, I mean, I mean, the, the obviously, the, you know, you have those still, no matter how much mindset you have, you have a little bit of self doubt going on and cause you're, a month in and you're starting to get applications, but it's not happening yet. You know, that was obviously something you had to just, I had to push through. Um, I had no idea what I was doing. What I, when I had like, I had 13 loans in process all of a sudden and had no idea how to even close them. <laughs> I was like, I don't even know what happens next, but you know, obviously I just had to work additional hours. And then from there, when I grew and you know, did all these loans, obviously I was working a lot of hours. Um, which is not why I came in the business in the first place. I thought, well, I'm going to have a kind of a Monday to Friday and, and be able to make this money, et cetera, which is what loan officers come in, right? That's just, 
same old thing. You know, it's a promise of, Hey, you can make good money and, 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 you know, control your life and all that stuff. And then you get in there and then, you know, that you're not making as much income as you want to. And then also you're, you're working more hours. Now the income, I was making more income than I thought I would ever make as a loan officer really quickly. I was like, well, that's okay. This is, this is, this is pretty awesome. The challenge was obviously going, okay, well, how do I, how do I do this? And, um, you know, still be, be sane. Yeah. Um, and I, I, life, sure. Right. I mean, at one point I remember, you know, I kind of looked in the mirror and I was like, where the hell, what happened to the, to the, to the badass like power lifter, right. That didn't give a crap, you know? And, um, because, you know, I started, you know, some of those planted seeds started happening where, you know, because in the loan game and, and, and a lot of, a lot of the things out there when you're doing entrepreneurship or whatever, just kind of like the success going from one phase to the next without losing that enthusiasm. It's a real thing because, you know, you can have success, the successful month, but within that month, you know, there's always something going negative, right? You know, it lending is not perfect. I mean, not, I mean you're working with people, everything else. And, and you have some of these negative thoughts coming in. And I remember where one of the points I had was I closed a lot of loans. I closed, excuse me, I closed three loans that day. I had, new contracts coming in, had this, what you would think would be a perfect day, right? And it was a Friday, get home. I'm sitting there, it's about seven or seven thirty at night. And I go on Facebook. And at this point I'm thinking I'm like the golden boy, right? Because it's like, everybody loves me. I'm like deals and right. And so I look on Facebook and one of the real estate agents that I had just like, I'd been closing deals with and I, I thought would never cheat on me. He was like shouting out this other loan officer. They just, they just closed with that. Oh my gosh, they're the best thing since sliced bread basically. And I was like, it, it, I allowed it to ruin my whole weekend, my whole weekend going, you know, like, why am I not good enough? Why, what, 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 you know, what's this? And then, then I had to go, Adam, we got to fix this because that should never be the issue. Um, you can't have those kinds of things. And then the other breaking point, a little, not breaking point, the other breakthrough I should say was again, where uh, I, I remember this is, and this is one of the reasons I coach now um, is because I was doing really well and it was like eight o'clock at night on an October night. I was there since 6 a.m. I come down my office, stairs, go outside, dark, parking lot. I take out my phone. I do a live video. And I said, where's your loan officer at? I'm grinding over here, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm over here just doing things, you know, others aren't. So I was all proud of that. Well, I get home kind of like, okay, get to bed. I wake up the next morning and I'm just in a, in a fog, right? Just in a fog. Get in my vehicle, my truck, I drive, up to the office and I stopped in the parking lot and I remember just, I, I, I was paralyzed. I didn't want to get out of my truck and I was just like, what's wrong with me? And finally I drug myself out of the truck. I get up to the office and I'm sitting there and I just sit there. And then all of a sudden the thought came to my head and like, I said, do I want to continue doing this any longer? And I was like, Whoa, I'm making more money than I've ever made before. And I just, that came through my head. And why is it because, well, I wasn't controlling my days. I wasn't controlling, you know, some of the things that creeping in the, the mindset stuff that was coming in my head to, to, to beat me down a little bit, to feel like I'm somehow inadequate. Um, even though I'm doing all this great stuff. And then I knew that, Hey, I have to, I have to make the breakthrough on the other side. And that's when I, that's when I did, I, you know, I ended up increasing more, and reducing my hours back, feeling more powerful, feeling, feeling the way I should feel. And then I started, you know, after a little time there, I said, you know what? I need to start, you know, helping other people. And then I was helping other people. And then, uh, you know, that's when I finally, after, after a period of time said, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to do this at, at scale and start helping people uh, do the same kind of things. Yeah. So 
super interested about this as well. So you, you created, uh, it's an online training program. I imagine that you, you pair that with some individualized or group coaching in some way, Mm -hmm. like how, how has that gone? And then like, what is the, what is the core? Like, is it just for, uh, mortgage loan officers? And then what has been the market acceptance for it? And, uh, Mm -hmm. and then how'd you get into podcasting too? I'm super interested about (laughs) that as well. So, yeah. Hires coaching is what it was, is, is, is my, um, is my business for, for, uh, for, uh, uh, business coaching. Opened that up, uh, officially last January. Um, and so I was doing a lot of one-on-one coaching, um, some, you know, some group coaching stuff, all that. Um, recently, uh, I have opened up with my business partner, genius loan officer. So glow. And that is our G6 program, helping business professionals absolutely scale their business in six hours a day. We are here to show up helping them do it in six hours through our 3D approach, which is uh, inside the walls, which is the marketing and sales approach. Um, They're acting more powerfully, moving quicker, um, and just, you know, living out the dreams and all that that they came in to do in the first place. So, that's what's going on there. Big things going on with, with that genius loan officer. Uh, my, my business partner, Dallas Hardcastle, that we're in, in it, in it to, to help business professionals. That is a, uh, it's got a lot of online, you know, uh, you know, as they sign up, they got a ton of material, um, that step process that moves them through. I think the biggest thing is, I don't know if you've ever, I'm not sure you have, obviously you went to training programs, Sure. And just give you all this stuff, right? And then you don't even know where to start. This is a this is a systematic approach to yep. this is what we're gonna do. You know, and it's it's squeezing the most amount of juice out of each thing you're doing, not just sorry, my language half assing a lot of things, things, yep. right? You like yep. you just you just kind of like come in there and like I want to kind of do that. And it's like, no, this is what we're concentrating on, this is what we're doing. Systematic approach to to really scale in their business. Um, and then as far as the podcast, uh, I just you know, I was, I wanted to do a start podcast about a year before I did. Um, I just, uh, I know how that feels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, you know, at the time I was like, you know, I'm just one of those that I'm, I'm, I'm like full steam ahead. Right. I'm the, I'm the hard charger. Let's just go. Um, very forward facing on everything I do. And I, uh, you know, I had a marketing assistant at the time and I was like, Hey, you know, just here, figure it out. Like, so I can show up and just record and do this thing. And she got stuck and then we had other projects. And then finally I come across someone they're like, yeah, you come to my studio and I just do it all for you. I was like, perfect. That's, that's what I need. Cause if I do anything more than that, that's just costing me money. Yeah. Um, so I showed up, I didn't really know where I was going to go. Um, it originally started as, as hires talks, didn't even know what I was going to, you know, I was like, okay, what do I name this thing? And, and kind of go, it's morphed into mortgage talks. Cause it's, it's mostly towards mortgage loan officers trying to scale their business, but also we have, you know, you know, real estate agents can, can benefit from it. They've been on their insurance agents, anything around that industry, and even the sales profession, professional, professional in, in general can, can definitely, um, you know, benefit from it. We've had high level salespeople on there, like uh, Joe Simon, uh, uh, Jeremy Miner, uh, just some really great guests on there um, as well. So it's been, it's been a fun journey. I always learn. That's cool, man. Hey, you talked uh, a little bit earlier about uh, like discipline and habits and things like mm-hmm. that. I came across the term uh, consistency is greater than intensity. Um, mm-hmm. What's that mean to you? And and then, you know, what's your approach to developing good habits here? Cause you got a lot of stuff going on. And like, if you don't have mm-hmm. containers for that, and if yeah. you can't be consistent around it, it's all going to start to slip as I'm sure, you know, so like, wh- oh, yeah. what's your mindset going in? Well, my first one is, and I always call it the, my power four and I do these events and it's, uh, you know, the, and the number one thing in the power four is energy. You know, where am I going to get my energy from today? I think is the number one thing. So people say, what's your first habit? It's where am I going to get my energy from today? And I'm not talking about Red Bulls and NASA's and all that. I'm talking about, yeah. I'm talking about where's that vision? Where's that cast? You know, people want to set a vision board and just that's, that's set it and forget it for the, that doesn't really work like that. What that day is going to get you jazzed up. What's, you know, what do you need to focus on that day? That's going to get you that energy, all that. So 
that's the first thing I do in, in a really car compartmentalizing everything is, is huge. Um, you know, and I just, I've always, I guess I've just always went, you know, with that attitude is everything's got its, you know, compartment. We put it in, Yeah. this is the time to do this, this is time, you know, it's like somebody was asking me this weekend, something about, uh, you know, sports because there's so, so much controversy in sports with the, the political and, and, in you know, um, and I said, listen, I don't ever care what somebody says politically. I never look at him different, any differently. You know why? Because I'd never look at them as anything other than they're great at what they do. And I don't worry about the other stuff. I don't, you know, and so I just always compartmentalize everything into that's in this bucket, you know, I do the same that's exact it. thing. I could care less. Like yeah. I don't look at you. I mean, cause I assume you're probably, you may be a, prick anyway i don't really yeah. care i don't no. really, i don't care you're great at business you're great at what you do i'm giving your due but i compartmentalize everything that's yeah. just kind of how i work yeah and i i think it's it's uh for some reason especially uh, in the television and social media helps us do this it's like we look at these nuanced aspects of individuals and we forget how every person is flawed uh every person Absolutely. does things that um that they wouldn't even agree with like yeah. every person yeah. has these, yes. these uh, behaviors or actions or words that manifest in their life that are, you know, easily taken out of context. So easy to take that yes. sound bite, take it out of context. Why, why would we not, uh, unless you're valuing their opinion deeply to inform some aspect of your life, that yeah. that is what shines the light on that area of the world for you. I just don't let them in. <laughs> right. I mean? I'm not with you. Yeah. Score the touchdown, like shoot the basket, you know, jump yeah. the pole vault. Awesome. Uh, and then the second that you go outside of that, like, tell me what's important to you, but I'll decide if I'm going to listen for sure. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But I think, yeah, I think that's just, I mean, it illustrates a point of just, you know, compartmentalize everything and know where everything has a place and everything has a time. And, uh, you know, it's, it's very important because, uh, you know, I love what you said there. I mean, consistently, I mean, you, you know, you have to be consistent for sure. Um, you know, but I think the the other thing is I've always learned over time is that, you know, get to us to the, to the wrong answer as fast as you can. Right. I mean, um, you know, I, I, I talk about this all the time is the tortoise and the hare is the biggest damn lie like ever yeah. been told. Right. Like it, you do not ever compare me to a tortoise. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Like, they, like that's just a horrible it's like they go slow and methodical and like hey don't make a don't make a wrong move and don't you know no no get to the get to the you know you know i have a limited risk equals limited income that's why i talk about all the time and it, it is like go out be consistent be bold get to the quickest you know just you gotta implement you gotta try and if you're consistent with your action it, the biggest thing is, is just taking action. Yeah. A lot of times it's going to be wrong action, you know, but guess what? Uh, if you sit there and paralyze, you're not going to be there. And that's the biggest thing with coaching. Uh, when I'm trying to, when we're trying to move the needle with people, um, you know, you, you have to take the action. If you're, if you're not going to take the action, it doesn't matter what kind of coaching you have. doesn't matter what platform you have. It doesn't matter what you have it's just not going to happen. It's kind of like the podcast. If you don't show up and just consistently go out there and just do it, it's, you know, it's not going to work. Well, and it, you know, it's funny. It's, it's, you know, the tortoise and the hare too, because I've, I've, I've unpacked this a little bit because it's not about the speed. It's about the behavior. Like right. the, the hare got out ahead and then fell asleep on the track. Right, right, so right. It's like, don't be the hare because the right. hare put in a ton of, of work effort right. and then just kind of, relax right. before the goal was achieved. So go achieve right. the goal, do it fast, make your mistakes. But right. once you pass the finish line, take your nap, like whatever, like, <laughs> you know, and set, set the next goal. But, yeah. um, you know, the, uh, the tortoise could have stayed up all night studying tape. Uh, and if the, <laughs> it doesn't matter because if the hair wasn't lazy, <laughs> the tortoise would have never won. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That, you know, I mean, I, I get, I get what they're saying, but it's oh, just like sure. the whole, you know, Hey, let's just, you know, because it's, it's, it, it teaches people to just be methodical and just, just think about everything and, you know, all the things don't, you know, measure twice, you know, twice, all that stuff. And I, I get, I get, we don't just want to do stuff that's 
haphazard. I can understand that you want to like, cause it's not like I don't do research, but when you're training people to always be hesitant in their action, which is what teaching happens throughout all the time. It, it's in the schools. It's in, it's what I hear of our parents. It's all that happens. And I can tell you that this just doesn't, the ones that are taking action and just failing and then failing forward and then just going, Hey, I'm going to figure it out is the ones that are the one that are conquering the world. I mean, there's nobody that's just sitting around waiting and waiting, waiting for that perfect opportunity. You're not really doing anything. It's just not, doesn't work that way. I mean, that's not part of it. I mean, we all, I mean, all the, all the big people have, uh, have failed, you know, more than anybody else. So, I guess that's uh, that's a whole tangent I can get off on, but I just I just I just love that because you know it's a you know it's like you know you lift them you know if I didn't never try to lift more weight you know it's like well let me analyze this you know for you know it's like no get out of the damn weight man and and you know some points you just gotta you just gotta get after for some for some reason in my head I've got that you ever watch that movie Unbreakable that Bruce Willis Sam yeah 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 movie where yeah. He's just sitting in the garage and it's like, how much can you lift? And they just keep putting weights on and putting weights on. For some reason, when you're telling me that story, that's what I, yeah. that's what I see you in a, yeah. a garage or basement, just throwing up more and more weights, figuring <laughs> out like this is something that you wanted to do. Yeah. Yeah. That's Absolutely. Cool. Hey, um, back to the housing industry. This is a, this is yeah. an interesting time, man. I can't help oh, but yeah. uh, remember 2006, seven, eight ish right. uh, of what's uh, going on in the world. We got a lot of, I know I live outside of Boise, Idaho. This is a fantastic market uh, to have a house in. It's not the best to uh, sell a house and then buy another house. And, um, <laughs> but I, you know, talk to me a little bit about what you see out there in the industry and like, what, what should yeah. we be thinking about when it, when it comes to the absolute, increase in housing prices that we're seeing in so many markets. Uh, yeah. How should I feel about this? <laughs> well, I mean, if you own a home, I mean, you should feel great about it. I mean, the, the, I think the biggest, um, you know, thing you hear out there, I was, I was at cigar bar here uh, in Georgia and I love it. Owner comes up to me. I'm a big cigar fan, a cigar and bourbon. Uh, I don't, I don't drink a lot, you know, cause you keep your mind sharp, but uh, I, I, I once a week, I would get along just fine. But. <laughs> once, once a week, once a week, I got my, I got my Thursday. I go there. It's my consistent, you know, I'm consistent with that. Right. Every Thursday I go out there. And, uh, but you know, he comes up to me, he's like, Hey, you know, cause he knows I'm in the mortgage industry. And he says, Hey, uh, you know, what do you think? I mean, uh, you know, this is going to be this big burst, right? And I'm like, well, what do you mean by the burst? Like I will make sure that we're on the same page. And he said, well, you know, the house is going to go up and then all of a sudden they're just going to go down, down. Right. And I'm like, but you said it, right. You, you talked about the 2006, 2007, 2008 area, which uh, I was actually in the industry for a brief period back in that time, like about a year and a half. Um, I was kind of like doing it not <laughs> here and there, you know, I was more into power life, not all this other stuff going on. So like had no idea what you could do at that point. And that was not my focus, but um, that was a whole different era, whole different era. And the reason why the prices went down so bad then is because there was artificial, there's, there's a couple of reasons why that just imploded. And I don't, I don't know what the experts were saying back then, if they weren't saying like, this is going to just come off the rails. Like, I don't know what they were looking at. There's no way because you were giving loans to people that by stated loans, for example, just stating what they made. Hey, okay. You make that. Okay, cool. I'm just going to put that on there. You, you, you know, they were getting arm loans for three years and all of a sudden it was just ballooning. You could also call the appraiser and say, Hey, um, I know this is probably worth 200, but put, can you come back at 250 and we're going to add stuff in there and get money back? Well, obviously at that point, there's a burst at some point because people couldn't afford the homes they're in, right? They couldn't afford homes. They had to go and then could they try to refinance? Well, no, because the home wasn't worth what they paid for it. Now, a whole transfer now, it's a whole different ballgame. People are qualified. The default rates are low. You know, they're, they're really low. They're really good. And they're going up at a crazy speed right now because there's some supply and demand, inflation, all that stuff is going on. Do we, do we know that it's not going to continue to go up 10, 12, 15%, whatever your area, whatever your area is? you know, over the next five years. Yes, absolutely. It's not going to, nobody thinks they're going to continue that. 
we do think it's going to it's going to continue to go up through 2022, which you know the housing market uh, reports and all that. We'll love it off to a zero, like where maybe a year or two, like it doesn't really go up in, in price. We can see that. But if you own a home, you should feel secure that it's continuing to rise at a good clip. It could, we, we definitely think through the end of the year, it's gonna continue to rise at a good clip. And probably through 2022, could level off after that. I, we don't, I don't see um, any reports, really it's just gonna just drop the bottom. All of a sudden you're, Three hundred thousand our home, like a year from now, it's going to be worth two seventy or two sixty or two fifty. Not really. Um, we don't really see that out there. So, you know, it's a crazy market. I mean, buyers, um, as you talked about, even just straight buyers, just trying to buy a, you know, straight out, they never bought a, they don't have a home. It's hard for them to to go under contract because there's sometimes thirty bids on a home and they're bidding twenty five, fifty thousand over, and they're still losing out. It's crazy. Um, but at the same time, you know, a lot of people understand the, the value of owning a home because, you know, uh, you're still, you're still making money. Yeah. You know, it's a, uh, it's another industry that's really int uh, interesting to me because of the saturation. I mean, obviously there's mm -hmm. um, a couple of aspects of um, the housing industry, uh, most notably how many real estate agents there are um, <laughs> like in Idaho. I think it's, um, I think we have like 16,000 real estate agents now in the yeah. state of Idaho. I mean, it's that population of like 2 million people. So a lot of, that's a lot of real estate agents. Right. Um, and, you know, and as far as all the other uh, services that, that sit around it, how do you differentiate yourself? Like how, how do you, uh, in a saturation like that, what, what's the, the biggest thing somebody going into it or somebody currently working in that space today, besides uh, going out and getting your course, uh, what, what, uh, what is something they should be thinking about in order to stand out? I mean, I think first of all, it, it's just having real authentic, great conversations. Uh, number one, I mean, um, a lot of people just try to go past that and it's like, you know, and they try to get, uh, you know, what's well, so all I do. I, I do. No, you don't. I, if you did, then you'd be doing a lot more deals there's always room, no matter what the saturation is, to do a great job, to have real conversations. You have to get in front of people and you have to have the right conversations. I know that's very basic and broad. However, it's just true. Um, your service, your products, stop talking about them. <laughs> okay. Knock it off. Like nobody gives a crap. Everybody says like, it's like everybody says they're, they got the best. Everybody says they have the best turn times. Everybody that's, you know, if you have real authentic conversations with people and figure out what their pain points are and you, you know, like we, in our course, we do have a, you know, systematic, how you're asking and, and, and what, you know, you're getting to that root causes and all that stuff. And, you know, you're able to, to have them answer their own questions and, and all that stuff. But the fact is, is that you have to have those real conversations and another, none of that can be, um, around what your products and services are. Yeah. Um, if you're out there in any industry, I would say that if you're talking about your products and services more than 10%, 15% of the conversation, you're losing sales. Yeah. Like, you gotta, you gotta show up with a genuine interest, right? I mean, that's genuine that's interest. Yeah. That's what I'm hearing yeah. is like, you gotta know the framework, the, the questions right. to play in, but man, right. if you're not showing up for that person to try to solve their problem, exactly you're probably making a, a really big mistake that's insightful man i appreciate exactly that. exactly and you know of course you know there's there's events you can I mean, obviously events bringing people together is a huge thing um you know anytime you can you can you can create a network uh bringing a network in to, for others and you you can you can facilitate that that's a that's a difference maker there's there's a lot out there i mean everybody has their own little things they could do. That's obviously why you don't want to kind of, you know, make it authentic to you, what you do. But um, saturation should never be anything that you, you know, somebody's fearful of. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not even a thing. I mean, because there's, at the end of the day, I mean, the 80-20 the rule is always applying, you know, and you can always push yourself in that 20%. You can, you know, and if you keep pushing up, you know, you can be in top 1%. That's where I'm at. It's top 1%. It's, you just keep pushing up and 
having the right conversations, doing the right activity, being consistent, showing up and, and showing up for others, not yourself is you're going to be just fine. There's always room for the best at the top. Always, always. It doesn't matter what it is. I love it. All right. And how are you finding balance in your life today? What's powerlifting like? Um, you know, you, I read, I read a little bit about you from another interview. You're doing some meditation. What's that look like for you? <laughs> What's that look like as well? And I'm not going to yeah. lie. Um, and people tell me this all the time. I don't always look like the, the guy that does a ton of meditation. Um, yeah. you don't either. Um, <laughs> so what's your practice like? So, so I don't do meditation all the time. It's again, where am I going to my, going to get my energy from today? And that is a movable target. So sometimes I feel like, okay, I need a different space, a different place. Um, you know, and I need to, to do this X, Y, and Z. Sometimes it ends up being, yeah, I need to meditate because my head is getting too cluttered. Um, so the meditation could be, sometimes it's, it's, you know, one day a week. Sometimes it ends up being, you know, I don't do it for a couple of weeks and sometimes I, I can go a stretch and do it two day, two weeks in a row. Um, just consistent. It just depends because again, I, I'm not a set it and forget it. I'm a, I'm a set and I'm a, I'm a set a, a, a certain, um, trigger, but I'm not a set a 100% an activity always and forever. Mm -hmm. Um, and so the trigger is where am I going to get my energy from today? Yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's, I think it's helpful for a lot of people to balance it's again, I think I compartmentalize things pretty well. Um, over time, you know, I, you know, it, it goes from a little bit of planning, you know, what do I have to do the next day? What's the big, what's the big things I have to accomplish all those things. And, you know, most people don't want discipline, but you know, when you discipline, discipline yourself and say, okay, I've got to get this done in this amount of time, this is my cutoff point. Then guess what? I mean, your, your rest of your world kind of opens up. And I think entrepreneurs are the worst for it because you know, they, they listen, I mean, I, I mean, I love the Grant Cardones of the world. I do, you know, he, he's great at what he does. And I, I, I admire a lot of stuff he's did. And, but there's so much out there that just says, Oh, we just grind all day, grind all day. And, and then, you know, but that's not, that's not what they're actually doing. A lot of times it's, it's a mantra. They're trying to, it's a, yeah. that's a following. And even if they are, you don't want to do that. And, and so you don't want to let everything just expand, yeah. contract it into to when you need to get it done. And, um, you'll be amazed how much more you can get done, how much more balance you can have. No, and I think, you know, and, and I'm starting to get a perspective on this as well is um, um, the grind all day mentality, I think mm -hmm. for a lot of people is a great spark and it's, mm -hmm. it helps them catalyze. It helps them like, I'm going into this and that's the kind yeah. of work ethic that it takes. But eventually as you kind of make it over a couple of humps as you start to build processes and systems, as you start mm -hmm. to get that work-life flow figured out a little bit more, you better take the time for yeah. yourself and for your family and for the things that you want to do in your life or everything else around you will burn. It's just, it's inevitable. I love what you, I love what you just said there. I hope you're, I hope listen, I want to kind of go back over that because I yeah. hope listeners understand that what you said is like base. That was a fire. That was a trigger like, and that was, you know, you can know like the business sex appeal, whatever it is yeah. that got you go, man, I'm doing something special. It's the grind because that's what they know they have to work really hard at. And the, but that may be the trigger and the catalyst to start you, you know, but then grind course can be anything different to anybody. It could be like, I'm blitzing six hours of grind right. and that's what I'm doing all day. Or, you know, it could be a, a wide range, but yeah, whatever it takes to like get you in that, action mode. Everybody's yep. different. I mean, I love that. I love what you said there. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. And, I, and I'm just starting to figure this stuff out too, uh, uh, at, at my house is like, guy, I need to unplug a little bit. Like I need to really like put my phone down for my family. I need to yeah. go on that walk. I never, <laughs> never really do a good job of when my, uh, when my kids come home from school, there's this like, there's this gap. And then sometimes all of a sudden it's dinner time and I'm still working. And it's like, man, I, I, let's just go on a walk. It's a nice day. Yeah. Like, and let's be together in this way. And that's where I get recharged into your focus. Like, where's that energy come from? Well, it comes from spending a little time with my kids and reinforcing the fact that I'm on yeah. an entrepreneur because I'm not fighting traffic right now 
and I'm home with these young people and I'm not beholden to somebody else in some way, shape or form. So uh, I love what you said. And then uh, again, I'm uh, glad to be able to add on to that a little bit. Absolutely. Yeah, I love it. I, I always call it focus life balance, not work life balance. I mean, yeah. It's like, you know, I, I was, I was coaching a client and uh, he was doing really well and growing, but you know, listen, I don't, I don't want anybody to take this and be like, Hey, listen, we're living this per- perfect world. And, um, everything's perfect all the time or, Hey, you're always going to work a six hour day. It's sometimes you have to push through a barrier before all of a sudden you can reduce the hours or whatever. But what I want, hopefully, you know, just like I was trying to help, um, this coaching client of mine, I said, listen, you're working a lot right now, but let me ask you something. If you could only have one hour a night with your wife for the rest of your life, that's it. Only one hour. Is it possible for you to have a better relationship than you have now? He's like, yes. And I was like, how? Well, obviously he would plan. He would make that a really focused time. He would put down his phone. He would just, that was all it. And I think that's in, in life and anything, right? I mean, when we lay our head down at night, if you said, Hey, you know what? As morbid as it may sound, if I was going to die right now, what, what would they be the images that come through your head? It would be flashes, right? It'd be those, those, those focused times, right? Yeah. There's those focused times. And so I think if you're out there, Hey, uh, you know, Hey, Adam, I, I'm, I'm working, I have to work 14 hour days right now. You know, just make sure you have focused time to, to give back some balance to yourself. Yeah. And set expectations with those around you as well. Like that's, and, yep. and that's, you know, sometimes it's going to be a long couple of weeks and I raise my hand and say yep. it. And then I schedule a couple of weeks out. Let's go find some time. Let's go get a yeah. year up in the mountains and like get away for yeah. a couple of days, which I'm, I'm yeah. doing here in June. So yeah. Um, yeah. Excited yeah. about that. Yeah. Adam, and I, I had to say the same thing, by the way, to my, my wife, because um, pushing into this new and I'm like, we're putting out all this stuff content. I was like, well, for the next month or so, this is going to be a, you know, I'm going to, I'm not going to have my six hour days. It's going to be, you know, some, some, some stuff, but then guess what? I'm going to work it right back down because you know, you know how to, how to, how to do that. So I love anyway, it. but yeah, I appreciate your, appreciate your time. Yeah, for sure. So tell us again, uh, where do we find you? Social media, website, otherwise shout out a couple things here as we're wrapping up. Yeah. Um, if you are, if you are a loan officer out there, just go to genius loan officer.com schedule a call. Um, if you want to hit me up on any of the socials, um, or you, Adam hires, you can find me, uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, um, hit me there and, uh, hit me a message. If you have any questions at all, uh, if you want to check out my, my, uh, my, um, my podcast, it's mortgage talks and I release one every Thursday. I love it, man. Hey, again, thank you so much for your time. I loved going on this journey with you, learning a little bit about your uh, powerlifting intensity and how that uh, yeah. manifested in, in uh, being a top loan officer and, and sharing that with others, man. And uh, looking forward to the next time we get an opportunity to chat. Yeah, man, you did an excellent job interviewing. Uh, you can tell you're very authentic and, and true in your nature and what you're trying to accomplish. And um, I'm sure the listeners are, are hearing that through, through the podcast. I appreciate it, my man. Hey, take care. Absolutely. Thanks. Bye.